I'm going to talk about making t-shirt quilts today. I have made quite a few of these over the years. Um, four for my oldest, three for my second oldest, and then we go down from there because the younger kids are still wearing the t-shirts that would go on the t-shirt quilts. But I have a daughter who I made a Snoopy quilt for a couple years ago, but she's kind of into more guy things, so she wanted a Marvel quilt or a comic strip kind of a quilt. So um, I, you can check out my blog, thesecretisgratitude.com, as I've been writing it for over five years, and I have several different t-shirt quilts on there. If you go down to the search box at the bottom of the homepage, you'll see a search box. You can type in t-shirt quilt on there and up will come all the posts on the several many different quilts I've made. Um, and then uh, I haven't done videos on them. I am new to vlogging about these kind of things. So this is my first attempt at vlogging on this or vlogging on it. Sorry, video on it. So what you do is you collect the t-shirts that you want for the quilt. If you know I have cheerleader quilts or dance quilt or um, baseball, jerseys, softball, any kind of sport, hockey jerseys, you can make it out of everything. If you look on my blog you can see I've used hats, I've used boxers, I've used pajama bottoms, anything that has a logo on it you can pretty much put on a quilt. If it has a lot of smaller things I'll, I'll put two on a quilt. So this one is two different shirts because the Jarvis is my co-pilot was just the center of the shirt and it didn't need to be a whole square. So um, I've made it two shirts into one. Now I've made up to four shirts into one before. If they just had like a logo over the left breast that, uh, for like a company logo or a jacket logo or on the sleeve, sometimes it will have the kid's name on the sleeve or something. I'll cut those off and put those on. Um, another fun thing I did was on one of the Snoopy quilt, I think it was, um, or maybe Tweety, I cut off all the tags and I st stuck them all on one thing. I thought they were kind of cute and different. So I'll probably put those somewhere on the quilt or on the pillowcase just as a kind of fun thing. So what you need to do is collect the t-shirts. Now, she didn't have very many. Um, some of them were mine. Like this one was one that I wore. Some of them are ones that she wore. Um, a lot, most of them are ones I purchased for this purpose. I found this fabric, the Thor fabric, and this um, Superman at a secondhand store. You can see the tags on it. It was a dollar, I think, for the fabric. And then, oh, that's off, yeah. And then I found some of these panels already cut into panels, um, also at a secondhand store. This one was bought already as a panel. Let's see, where's another one? So, um, also, this was a shirt we wore. So anyway, you you can kind of go with a mixture if you don't have that many shirts. Now, ways to find them. Put it on Facebook, asking your friends. I found some that way. These were brand new, had the tag on them still, but I found them at a secondhand store for $3.99. So that's a way to get fabric, because that would do quite a few backs of squares. This Most of the shirts were Walmart clearance, uh, $3.00. Um, there was a couple that were a little bit more expensive, but they had the back, they were reversible. So that Marvel one up there and the black and red comic one were one shirt. So for $5 I got two panels. It, this whole quilt probably cost more, three times as much as any of the other quilts I've made because I had to purchase the shirts because I have all girls. We didn't have a lot of Marvel shirts. I mean, I can't imagine one of the girls wearing that whole shirt. So, um, so I just kept checking clearance racks at Walmart. Kmart, and then secondhand stores. Like this Captain America one, I found at a secondhand store for a dollar. Um, so you can just keep checking around different stores. Like I said, put it on Facebook, ask anybody if they have extras. Something like Marvel is a popular thing, so a lot of kids might have had them or grown out of them. Kids will grow out of them or stain them. But even if they're stained, you can cut them and make two or three sh shirts into one square. Um, or you could use them on the pillowcase. So some of these smaller ones that I have, like this Captain America one and this Spider-Man one, I'm actually going to use on the pillowcase. It's just taking the spot of a shirt that she actually has with her at college and wears. So in that spot is going to go, it's a Batman, really cute Batman shirt that she has that we're going to put there. 
that's different than any of these. So uh, it's more of a costume kind of a thing. Also, um, after Christmas, a lot of their pajama bottoms will go on sale. You can get a lot of the footy pajamas on sale. Also, save any t-shirts. Like this is one that my kids made for something and they didn't want it on their quilt. Um, it And most of the time I used to throw them away because I don't even think secondhand store would want something like this. It's kind of an odd thing. But every t-shirt has to have a backing because if just the one size, the one isn't thick enough. So you have to have two or back it with this. This is one I already bought cut and, and somebody had already put some backing on it. But I didn't want to waste backing. It's kind of more expensive. You have to iron it on. What I've always done, this is how I do it, I just cut the front and the back at the same time and then I make it double thickness. And that has worked really, really wonderful for the kids because the seams don't... Knit, this knit jersey, when you sew it, it will it will pop the seam if you pull it or stretch it. But with the two layers, it doesn't tend to. So I stitch the front together, front sides together. So if I'm doing one like this, of course you have to, before you cut it exactly to size, it's a little bit larger than the other pieces you can see, you stitch it and then once it's stitched, then you cut it to size. Because if you cut it to size before you stitch it, you might sew it too much and then it will be too small for the space that you need it. Also, um, so what I would do for this is I leave Okay, let me talk about placement before I do that. Placement. If I had all of the red, sorry, I'm making noise with this. If I put all of the red panels together on one row, it would be a very lopsided quilt. Um, you would think that it's kind of haphazard, but it's not. It's actually thought through very carefully um, as far as where the placement of the shirts go. Now, if you have smaller shirts, you can see these ones are very tall and long, and then the middle ones get really short and then they go back to longer at the top. I wanted the, the longer ones to be on either end and then the smaller ones, because then you'd only see, if the longer ones were in the middle, you would only see the longer few that are in the middle. But by putting the smaller ones in the middle, you get to see more of the different shirts. These ones will be hanging off the bottom of the bed if she uses it on a twin bed, which is what they usually do at college. If they use it on a king size bed or twin, you'd see a little bit more, I mean a full, you'd see a little bit more, but chances are this will probably be on a twin size bed. So I usually make them king size when I'm making them because that way it's like a bedspread because if you're going to do all this work you don't want it being underneath the bedspread. You want this to be seen with, if you're going to put that much money and effort into it because it takes a long time to make these. So cutting them down to size. Usually I'll take the biggest one for a row. So I'll fold them like this when I'm just deciding where I want them. You can't cut them before you find out where they want to go because you don't know which size square. They're never, most every t-shirt is going to be a different size. So I'll just fold them like that and stick them in the spot. And the reason I'm not using this one is because it's smaller and she has the one that she wears that she likes bigger. So I would have to cut that whole row down if I was going to use this smaller t-shirt there. So before you cut anything, lay them out, make sure you like the placement. Like, for example, there's a red one in this row and a red one in that row. Then there's a red one in that row and a red one in this row. Then there's a red one in that row and a kind of a red one in that row because I didn't have that many red ones. So I've got the Superman, which is kind of red one. So in that row and in that row, there's only one red. Okay, in this row and in that row, there's one red. In this row and that row, there's one red. So you can see there is some kind of a method to this. It's not just haphazard to stick them down because you want it to be aesthetically pleasing to your eye. And when people look at it, you don't want them to be drawn to one quarter of the quilt. If I had all the red panels, say, in that quarter, people automatically go to bright colors. So all of the eyes would go to that corner and they might miss out on some of these other fun shirts because all the red are in one corner. So that might seem kind of a silly thing, but it, it's true. That's just what studies show. So when you're putting it together, look at the Batman, for example. You don't want all of your Batman to be in one row unless you're doing that. So one could be Hulk, one could be Batman, one could be Captain America, one could be Iron Man. But the thing is, you'd have to have the exact amount of shirts for that. So instead of having, like, the Avenger quilt here, there, all together in one spot, I have them spread out. So there's Avenger one, you know, group one there, there's a Marvel group one there, there's another one there and another one here. They're not all in the exact same corner. 
also um, the Batman ones. You can see it in there. There's one over there. There's one over there. We didn't want all of the Hulk ones together, so we got a green one down here and a green one up there. So when you're placing them together, um, you want to pay attention to that. There's not. We tried to keep too many blacks not being together on one row or together. But sometimes you just have to go with the placement of the size of the shirts. We didn't want to cut Captain America with the Avengers symbol behind it because he's, you know, that's nice. We could cut down a, one or two of these, but not very much, you know, because they're, they're pretty much the whole square. So you just kind of have to go with the size of the, the squares. And then to sew this, if you can't leave it laid out, I'm lucky. I don't have any little kids terrorizing it, and I have a couple pins in some of them. But, you know, I have had smaller kids around, so you just have to kind of play it like, you know, by ear, depending on what you have. If you have to um, put it away, and you can't leave it out, I put the t the top one, on, I like do it like a book. So I would put this one on top of this one, on top of that one, and then I would label that with a, a piece of paper pinned on, row, top row. And then... Um, then I would do the next row. Top that one goes on top of that one, 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 and then right, second from the top row. And so I always know that I'm going left to right, like I'm reading the book. And I would go down like that. When I am picking them up to sew, um, it's right sides together. So I would this part, this this one is a little different. I probably shouldn't start on this one. Let me use this row. So you would take right sides together. Because sometimes I've sewn the edge one on the wrong corner and then I've had to unpick it because it threw off the whole symmetry of the quilt. So I I just take one piece at a time and this one actually needs to be sewn a little bit too um, because I want to stick this in the corner there so it will have a bigger square. Um, but you would sew, you know, right sides together. So I take the only the quilt piece that I'm sewing at the time. If I have can leave it out, that's what I'll do. So, um, and I didn't cut this in further because I wasn't sure how wide I was going to need it, depending on. So these two rows have these kind of weird, they were a muscle, muscle shirt. So I had to cut off part of it to sew in where the arm is if I needed it. There's just so many variations on this type of a thing. But the reason I did that was because I've got the fabric behind a quilt panel on these smaller little kid shirts. And I wasn't sure how wide or skinny I would need them. So I haven't cut the fabric on this yet until I have sewn these other rows so that I know exactly how wide I need to make that square and that square. So I left them a little wide until these other squares are sewn together. So normally what I do is I start with one corner of the bottom or the top, whichever is easier, and I sew that one to that one, then I pick up that that one and pin it before I do anything. So these two would be sewn together, so then I would pick these two up and I would lay it like that, and then I would pin it there, and then I would take it up and sew it, and then I would pick this one up once it's sewn to those three, and I would flip it all the way over and sew that one and go that way. So I'm starting with one corner and going to the other corners. I don't sew them um, out of order, so like I wouldn't sew those two together and then sew these two together and then sew that one to them because it gets confusing. And I have done this so many times that I know <laughs> you forget where they're lay laid out. So before I do anything, once I have it laid out how I want it, I take a picture so that I can refer to the picture and make sure I'm putting them in the order that the kid wants them in. Now, I, um, if I'm doing it as a surprise, it doesn't work very well if the kid's older and they might want specific um, favorite memory t-shirt quilt in a specific area. So I was doing one that, where we wore a lot of the clothes. It was, it was something like Looney Tunes where almost every one of the clothes is something we wore. And they wanted them where they could see the shirt t-shirts that they wore more frequently or that child might have worn versus a cis sibling. So we would put those in the center or near the top center so that they would be ones that would be closest to them. So every kid, it's weird, but every kid does have an opinion about this. <laughs> so I had to Skype my daughter at college and sh and say, okay, where do you want the, pe the, you know, different things? And for the most part, she didn't care too much, but she did like the aesthetic, aesthetic of the reds not together and the blues not together. She's very artistic, and so that was something that she wanted input on. 
but for a smaller child or if it's all evenly worn things I don't think it matters too much as long as you like the way it looks and and that's just how it has to be the strongest things I would say is make sure you either put a backing on it like this one or do front and back and that's why I keep weird t-shirts like that one so that I can make that the backing also what's wonderful is if you're using sweatshirts none of these are sweatshirts but a lot of the times like our Winnie the Pooh quilt that we made was a lot of those were sweatshirts that the kids wore when they were little so when you're doing a sweatshirt you don't have to use the front and the back it makes it too thick compared to the other t-shirts so I use the back of the sweatshirt for the uh, backing to a shirt say that we use the front and the back on so if there was a shirt they did for choir and it had something on the front that they want wanted to keep and something on the back that they wanted to keep then you would need to have a spare t-shirt for the backs of those that's why I hold on to those because some of these you won't have backs because you want to use the front and the back of the t-shirt for example this one this Marvel one I used the front here and the back there so I needed an extra shirt to make the squares for the second piece of fabric so that it doesn't pull funny. I've seen people make them with just one layer and it pops holes and they've had a problem with that. So always use two layers or some backing, iron on backing, that will give it the strength that it needs to not rip and tear. But for easiest for me is just collecting and when people are getting rid of bags of stuff and they'll say, hey, do you want to look through it? I'm like, yeah, sure. So I just take out the t-shirts that maybe somebody couldn't use that are stained or something so that we have those when I'm making a t-shirt quilt because each girl has at least two from her t-shirts from high school, sports, um, colleges, missions, things like that. Whereas um, ones like this, um, you know, I'm going to make one like this. but So it's good to keep extra shirts just as backing. So if one kid's not going to use a couple of the shirts they have from a sports team or something, keep those in case another child needs backing for some of their squares. So I, I definitely needed backing, so I'm glad I kept that t-shirt even though it's kind of ugly. doesn't matter. It won't be seen. Okay, so if you have any questions, and I haven't explained it well enough, um, go to my blog, thesecretisgratitude.com. Check out t-shirt quilt on the bottom, and um, I show how to pull a hat apart. I show how to pull boxers apart, how to take a zipper out of a sweatshirt and sew the front of the sweatshirt so that it looks like the zipper is still there so that you can use a zip-up hoodie. Um, leaving the pocket is always fun for the different kinds of pockets on the hoodies or the pants or the boxers or whatever. Um, there, I've, there's probably not much I haven't put on one of the girls' quilts um, of, of some kind. You can just take one, like I said, and just do little labels or the front name off of their shirt or whatever. So anyway, that's just something. And if you still have questions after that, feel free to ask. I have made lots of these, and I'm um, to the point where there's not much new that I haven't you know that I haven't figured out on me so feel free to ask anyway good luck making your quilt